ring a bell with somebody. So, uh, come back to my original quote. Feynman is always very quotable. So we have been examining, we have chosen to examine. You all came out on a Wednesday night uh, because you wanted to examine a phenomenon uh, which is impossible to explain, absolutely impossible to explain in any classical way. It has, at the heart of it, the, it, it, the phenomenon is at the heart of quantum mechanics. And Feynman says, in reality, it is the only mystery. And he's only talking about, of course, science. It's the only mystery of science. It's the only thing that cannot be explained. And yet, it's pretty fundamental to all science. Because there's nothing that science studies that isn't made up of quantum particles. Because everything's made up of quantum particles. The standard, again, explanation of quantum mechanics insists that we do have to change our view of something very fundamental. So, as Neil Bohr, the father of quantum mechanics, father of the Copenhagen interpretation, says the survey of quantum theory will demonstrate that the common sense view of the world, we all think we're sensible people, common sense, the common sense view of the world in terms of objects that really exist out there, they're independent of us. This view of the world totally collapses in the face of quantum mechanics. He also says an independent reality in the ordinary physical sense can neither be ascribed to the phenomenon that we're looking at, nor to the agencies of observation. Okay, how many hippies left over from the 60s do we have here? I don't know if any of your friends went around going, man, what is reality? Well, it turns out it's a good question. Uh, well, two more quotes. Uh, Werner Heisenberg, another uh, early developer of uh, quantum mechanics before, if one wants to give an accurate description of the elementary particle, I want to describe what that particle is. The only thing that can be written down as a description is a probability function. Well, it's most likely going to be this when we look at it. But then one sees that not even the quality of being belongs to what is described. This is not a wacko thinking. This is consensus. Uh, as much as the scientific establishment can say, well, we have a general consensus about how to interpret this, this is it. Not everybody signs on, but this is the standard explanation for the last 75 years. And perhaps I'll let someone else explain this last one. As I had started last, uh, last Sunday, I gave a little um, synopsis of why I got so interested in quantum mechanics. And for me, it was one of those little events that ended up being very significant. And it had to do with a thought that the things that I believed in terms of my faith were somehow about an inch and a quarter off from what I believed when I looked out at the world. And I could live with that for a while, but at some point I had to decide that what I believed as my faith was simply a little bit, but undeniably irreconcilable with what I believed in another sphere. And so I decided, I decided that the other sphere was wrong. My faith was right and the other sphere was wrong. And it wasn't until about 10 years later that I started saying, huh, what was the quantum mechanics that was all about? And it's very odd. I don't know why that thought entered my head. But as it turns out, as I 
told people last week. The more I get into what I thought was going on and what I thought was irreconcilable with my faith and what I thought I had to discard, well, you know, there might be room for some compromise here. It might be that the things I believe in my faith can be reconciled with the things I see out there. And the earlier quotes, I think, are about as close as I can get to proving that.